Today, I'm going to show you how you can get every linear equation question correct on the SAT, regardless of complexity. And I'm going to show you some pretty hard ones. So the first thing to know is, what is a linear equation? So let me go and dive into it right now. A linear equation is generally in the form y equals mx plus b. And you probably remember this from school, and it's ingrained in your mind, where, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. I mean, you've said it over and over and over to yourself all throughout school. Let's try and understand it a little bit more. When you have an equation and x is not raised to any other power but 1, then it's a linear equation. And you can you can convert it to this form by solving for y. The SAT is not going to be so nice to you and put it in this form, but you could always put it in this form by solving for y. Let's understand the different parts of it. You have m, which is the slope, and you have b is the y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is the initial value. When x is 0, y is b. Okay, so when x is zero, that's the y-intercept. So that was the general um, definition of the y-intercept. The other is the slope, and that's something I want you to memorize because that's going to show up on the SAT a lot. So this is what I want you to memorize. When x increases by one, y will increase by m. Okay. So when x increases by 1, y will increase by m. And that's what I want you to memorize, because they're going to ask that on the test. So now if I have a, any, any equation, for example, on the SAT, y equals 2x plus 3, that's a general linear equation. That's an equation of a line. I know that the y-intercept is 3, meaning when x is 0, y is 3. Great. The slope is 2. That means that when x increases by 1, y will increase by 2. Good. What's an equation of a line that's parallel to this line? Parallel means it's the same slope. So it'd be y equals 2x plus whatever, let's say 4. That would be parallel. What about perpendicular? y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 4 or whatever. Perpendicular is always negative reciprocal of the slope. OK. When I have two lines, generally what's going to happen is they're going to intersect each other. And that's what we call one solution. That's going to be the solution to my equations. Now, how do I solve for this point right here where they intersect each other? Well, I need to set them equal to each other. So if this is y equals 2x plus 3, and this is y equals negative x plus 2, then how do I get the point at which they intersect? I just set them equal to each other. So I set 2x plus 3 equals negative x plus 2. Add x, add x. That gives me 3x plus 3 equals 2. Minus 3, minus 3. 3x equals minus 1. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals negative 1 over 3. So x is negative one third. That's the x point at which they intersect each other. Now, how do I get the y point? Simple. I just plug it into any one of these equations, and I'm going to get the y. Awesome. When will I have no solutions? No solutions. I'm going to have no solutions when they don't intersect each other. When will they never intersect each other? When they're parallel. Parallel lines never intersect each other. How do I know if they're parallel? Well, they have the same slope. So if lines have the same slope, they'll be parallel and there are no solutions. Parallel. Got it. When will I have infinitely many solutions? So infinitely many solutions, they have to intersect each other all the time. So it would be the same line. Same line, infinitely many solutions. All right, you now understand completely everything you need to know about linear equations for the SAT, and I'm going to prove it to you. Let's now turn our attention to actual SAT problems, and let's understand how this knowledge actually plays in getting these questions right. So let's look at question six. 
A pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height H of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age A in years between the ages of two and five. Okay, so what I'm looking here is I'm looking at an equation where A is X and H is Y, A is years, and H is height. I'm also noticing this is a linear equation, right? Y equals MX plus B. In fact, the SAT was so nice to you, they even gave it to you in the form that you know and love. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? So that's something that we memorized. When X increases by one, Y will increase by M. When, H incre when A increases by one, so A is years, so when the years increase by one, H, or the height, will increase by three, because that's the slope. Perfect. Good job. We'll see another one later on. But um, let's move on. So this question, we get a lot of students who are just unsure of how to solve this question. I don't even know how to start. So let's look at this question. In the system of equations above, k is a constant, and x and y are variables. For what value of k will the system of equations have no solution? So the first thing to realize are these equations, these are linear equations. They're linear equations. I know they're linear equations because x is to the power of 1. Good. So I could even convert them into y equals mx plus b because I know y equals mx plus b. I don't know this form. The other thing to look at in this question is they're asking you, when will it have no solution? Now, what do we know? No solutions will be when they're parallel. When are they parallel? Same slope. Okay. So let's convert these equations to the form that we really love. So let's solve for y. Let's call this equation one. Let's call this equation two. Let's solve for y. Let's, um, let's subtract kx from this kx, subtract kx. So I have negative three y is equal to negative kx plus four. Now I divide by negative three, divide by negative three. I have y equals negative kx over negative three plus four over negative three. Well, I know negative over negative will just cancel it out. So this becomes y equals k over three x minus four over three. And I'm gonna call this equation one. Now I know this equation. It's in the form y equals mx plus b. Now I know what, now I know that I can manipulate it. The next one, let's solve for y, negative four, negative, 4x, negative 4x. So I have negative 5y is equal to negative 4x plus 7. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. I have y equals 4 over 5x minus 7 over 5. And I'm going to call this equation 2. All right, I have a linear equation 1, linear equation 2. Great. So now they're asking, when will it have no solutions? Well, it'll have no solutions, we said, when they're parallel. Well, when are they parallel? When their slopes are equal to each other. So let's set their slopes equal to each other. K over three equals four over five. Now let's cross multiply. Five K equals 12. K equals 12 over five. That's it. Easy peasy. The SAT is not going to give it to you in the form that you like. You have to convert to that form. But as long as you understand this, the concept is the same. All right, let's move on to the next problem. This is another problem we see, we see most students get wrong. And, you know, I'm not just giving you the easy problems. I'm giving you the problems that these are the problems that most students get wrong. And we can see how we can do them. The, the equation above shows a temperature F measured in degrees Fahrenheit related to a temperature C measured in degrees Celsius based on the equation which of the following must be true. Okay, this looks like a very crazy problem. But what do we notice about it? It's a linear equation. So let's convert it to be a linear equation. So let's multiply this out, the five ninths. So this becomes C equals five ninths F minus 32 times 5 ninths. So the slope is 5 ninths, and the y-intercept is um, minus 32 times 5 over 9. 
Okay. So now what do we know about a linear equation? Well, when f increases by one, y, c will increase by five ninths, right? When, when, when x increases by one, y will increase by m. So when f increases by one, c will increase by what? The slope, which is five ninths. So now let's look at number one. A temperature increase of one degrees Fahrenheit is equivalent to a temperature increase of five ninths degrees Celsius. That's exactly right. So now in order to sort of investigate the other two, um, a temperature increase of one degree Celsius, we need, a, we need a solve for C. So let's convert this equation to solve for C. So how do we do that? Well, we can add 32 times five ninths to the other side. Um, I mean, we're solving for F. So C plus 32 times five over nine is equal to five nines F. So now let's multiply by nine over five so we can get F alone. So F is equal to nine over five C plus 32 times five over nine times nine over five. Well, these cancel out. So it's just F is nine fifth C plus 32. So now when C increases by one, which is what they're asking, when C increases by one, F will increase by nine over five. Well, nine over five is 1.8. And that's exactly why two is right. Three says a temperature increase of five ninths degree Fahrenheit. Well, we didn't talk anything about five ninths degree increase is equivalent to a temperature increase of one degree Celsius. That's not true. We know that a temperature increase of one degree Celsius is equivalent to um, nine fifths which is 1.8. And a temperature of increase of one degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to five ninths, which is exactly what we know from the linear equations, from memorizing that in the linear equations. Okay, let's move on to another problem right here. The average number of students per classroom at Central High School from 2000 to 2010 can be modeled by this equation. All right, this equation is y equals 0.56x plus 27.2. Great, where x is the number of years, so x is years, and y is the average number of students. Which of the following best describes the meaning of the number 0.56? So what is 0 0.56? 0 0.56 is the slope. So what do we know about the slope? When x increases by one, y will increase by m. When x increases by one, y will increase by 0 0.56. So when x, which is years, so when years increase by one, y will increase by 0.56 students. And that's exactly what C says. The increase in the average number of students per classroom each year. Exactly. So as long as you say that to yourself and you memorize it, you'll be able to get these questions right. So let's take a look at number 11. In the xy plane, the graph of which of the following equations is perpendicular to the graph of the equation above? Perpendicular. Well, what do we know about parallel? Parallel is same slope. Perpendicular is negative reciprocal. Unfortunately, this equation is written in a way that I don't understand because I like y equals mx plus b. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. I have 3y is equal to 2x plus 6. Divide by 3 divide by three, I have y equals two thirds x plus six over three, which is two. So this equation is the equation they're asking. Y equals two thirds x plus two. So what is the slope? The slope is two thirds. So what is the slope that's perpendicular? It has to be negative reciprocal. So negative reciprocal is negative three over two. So we're looking for a line where the slope is negative three over two. So you can go through the answer choices and just working through the answer choices, solve for y. And um, let's, um, let's look at a, let's solve for y. So you have two y is equal to negative three x plus six. Divide by two, divide by two, y equals negative three over two x plus three. Um, yeah. So right there, that's the slope. You can work through the other ones just to be on the safe side, but that's exactly what the answer is.
So if you follow this approach, then you'll be able to recognize that it's a linear equation. Once you know it's a linear equation, you could follow these rules in order to get each one of these questions correct. Please like and subscribe, and I really do appreciate all of your feedback and all of your support. Thanks so much.